You want to learn and speak the language, and you know that you need to learn more words so you can speak more, but memorizing words is boring and painful work. But what if you could skip that hard work and quickly review words in minutes a day, and actually remember them in the long run? Keep watching. In this guide, you'll discover all about spaced repetition learning and how it makes remembering easy, how to use the spaced repetition flashcards inside our system, and how to customize your learning with the flashcards. But first, if you don't yet have access to our language learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. So let's jump in. I'll guide you through our learning system so you get to see exactly what's inside and our members-only study tools. But first, what are spaced repetition learning and spaced repetition flashcards? First, we need to define spaced repetition learning. Spaced repetition is where your learning gets spaced out over time, where if you learn a new phrase today, you take a break and come back on another day to review it, then again in a few days, and so on. Why? First, you need repetition to learn anything. And second, your brain remembers better if you come back after periods of time. Because if you tried to cram all at once, you'd never remember anything in the long run. Spaced repetition helps you remember in the long run, and it's backed by science. And spaced repetition flashcards apply that spaced repetition method to help you learn the language and remember it for good. Okay, so let's take a look at how to use the spaced repetition flashcards inside our system. First, where do you find them? So to find these spaced repetition flashcards, you can go to the vocabulary drop-down menu from any page on the website and click on flashcards right here. So when you click on this, you'll find a menu appear. And inside the menu, you'll find all of your flashcard decks available. So in this case, we have a few on this page, but you'll see basically any deck that you've already created. So that could be like a core word list. So you might have have access to like the 2000 core word list and you might have a flashcard deck made for that, great. You might have some specific flashcard decks that you yourself have created, that's also great. But for today, I want to take a look at this one, this core 100 word deck. Everybody has access to this one. So if you are a free member, if you're a paid member, doesn't matter, you'll be able to access these 100 core words for the language you're studying. So you'll see a little bit of information on the first part of this deck right here on this kind of cover page here. And then to begin your study session, you can click on the study button. So when you do this, you'll get a little bit more information about what you're about to study so that you know that you're not gonna study forever. And you're gonna see in this example I'm about to show you that depending on the settings that you have, which we'll talk about a little bit later, you'll get some different information to help you remember the vocabulary that you're working on. So for now, let's just click start session and we can take a look at what is in front of us. So first we have nine, the word nine. So this is obviously the definition of something. So nine is as in the number nine, the number that comes after eight and before 10. So when you think you have it correct inside your mind, or maybe you say it out loud, you can click on show answer. Once you do this, it will give you the answer. It will give you some information. It will give you like an example sentence. And you have the option, depending on your settings again, to click incorrect or correct. This part is really, really important. If you got it incorrect, make sure that you click the incorrect button. If you got it correct, great, you can click that. So for this, we'll click correct. Let's take a look at this next one. So lamb is the next one here. A lamb is a baby sheep. That's one way to understand this. So I'll click on show answer. But in this case, let's say I got it incorrect, right? Let's say I didn't recognize the vocabulary word lamb. That's okay. So I would click on incorrect here and we just go on to the next word. So it's not like there's a penalty when you mark something as correct or incorrect. Rather, when you mark something as correct or incorrect, you are telling the spaced repetition flashcard system, this word is okay for me, or this word is not okay for me. So when you're marking something as incorrect, it's telling the system, I need to study that more. So that's a way for the system to know, okay, I should show you this vocabulary word some more. Okay, so let's take a look at one more and then I'll talk a little bit more about the different settings and other features that you can use to make sure you that you get the most out of these flashcards. So this is the second month of the year, another definition that we have. We show the answer, I think it's probably February here. So we show the answer, February, second month of the year, great. I'm correct, so I'll mark it as correct, okay? So 
Let's take a look now. I'll end this session here, but ideally you'll finish all of the vocabulary words in each session when you begin. But for now, I want to talk a little bit about the different settings that you can use to make sure that you get the most out of these flashcards. So as I said before, these flashcard decks that are on the screen right now are unique to this account that we are using to create this video. But you can create your own flashcard decks, of course, and they will all appear here. Let's take a look, though, up here at the Settings button. You'll notice that there are a lot of different things that we can change here. First, I want to talk a bit about this card types section up here on the right. So we just practiced using like a definition for something and then saying the word that is associated with that definition, right? So this is one way that you can use the flashcards for your studies. But by toggling these, you can enable other types of study. So listening comprehension means you will hear the word and then you have to give the definition or maybe Maybe the other side, you know, like we just practiced with the actual definition. You might hear the definition and then have to give the word and so on. So by toggling these different features, you can get different types of study for your vocabulary studies. So this is one part of kind of like the way that you can customize your studies. On the other side, however, we have these more general settings. So that means that if you want to like have an image show along with your flashcard, if you want to have the part of speech show or not show, that means if you want it to be clearly labeled as like a noun or a verb or whatever, you can enable or disable that here. Another really interesting feature that I want to talk about though is this answer interface section right here. So it says auto, scale, and buttons. So the feature that I just showed you, or rather the study method I just showed you, had an incorrect and a correct option, right? After you do your study session or after you study that one vocabulary word. But if you click on the scale option and save that, I'll also turn off listening comprehension just to go back to the original settings we had, this will enable a kind of special spectrum for your answer. So if you feel like it was really, really hard, you can kind of mark that on the spectrum. So I want to show you what this looks like. So we'll go back to the same deck to study and take a look at that. So I'll start the session and we'll do the same thing here. So here we have programmer, a noun, okay? So I can guess that I need to provide the definition in this case. So somebody who writes code for software and other computer applications. Okay, so I'll show the answer. So in this case, I got it correct, that's great. So, but you'll notice here down at the bottom, there's a scale now. Instead of just buttons, you can kind of mark how confident you were in your answer. So in this case, I feel very, very confident that my answer was correct. But in situations where you don't feel feel so confident, you can also do that. So I'll click up here at the top of correct for this one. I feel very confident about that. And go on to the next one, hand in this case. So hand, I'm guessing that probably means the part of the body. I'm guessing that this is probably not the verb to hand something because this is the core 100 word deck. And I'm guessing this is probably the body part. So we'll go to show answer. And again, it is the portion of the body starting from the wrist. Okay, great. But let's say that I made a mistake with this one, or let's say that I wasn't really so sure. I could mark that. I could click here anywhere on this spectrum to help the system understand my level of confidence about that vocabulary word. And by doing so, that tells the system how much I need to see that word or how little I need to see that word in the future. So this is how the system remembers your specific answers and thus knows which word to show you next and which word maybe you don't need to see so much coming up in the future. So this is a really, really good way to make sure that you're studying really efficiently. And then, you know, when you need to study again in five days or in, you know, in a week, in a month or whatever, that you're studying the things that are actually still challenging to you. And you're not just reviewing things that you're already really, really familiar with and really comfortable with, but you're always making progress. So the spaced repetition flashcards are a really good way to do this. And if you combine this, say with, for example, like the 2000 core word list or a specific word list that you find on the website that you know you really want to practice, this can be a really great way to make sure that your study sessions are super efficient and that you get the most out of all of the tools that we have available for you. So if you want to speak more of your target language, you'll need to know more words and phrases. And the best way to learn and actually remember all the words is through space repetition flashcards. So, if you want to learn the language and get access to these learning tools and our learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account.
If you're learning a language, you're constantly coming across new words and forgetting them right after, which is too bad because your language would have been so much better if you could hold on to those words and remember them. Now, you could write them down, or if you're learning with our system, you can just save them to your extended brain, the word bank, with just one click. And in this video, you'll discover one, all about the word bank, two, how to save keywords and phrases, and three, easy ways to review the words so that you never forget them. But first, if you don't yet have access to our language learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. So let's jump in. I'll guide you through our learning system so you get to see exactly what's inside and our members only study tools. Okay, so let's get into it. What is the Word Bank? The Word Bank is a premium study tool that you can use so that you have a really, really easy way to collect all of the new words and phrases and sentences that you pick up in your studies. So you can think of it kind of like an extension to your brain. So you can use this to help make sure that you review the words and expressions that you actually need to review. You can keep words that are interesting to you here, whatever it is you want to do with it. It's a very flexible tool. So first, let's take a look at where we find this tool, and then we're going to talk a little bit about how we can use it and some different kinds of study resources that you can get from this one thing. So first, where do we find the word bank? If you click on the vocabulary menu or just hover over vocabulary menu and then click on word bank, you can find the word bank page. Also, if you are using the app, you can find the link for this in the dashboard too. So this will give you the word bank page. So on the word bank page, you have a few bits of information about each of the things that are there. You've got some audio icons that you can press. You've got the word, the part of speech, uh, the definition, the meaning of the word, depending on the language, you will also have the translation. And you will also have at the end of the row, this thing that says three lessons or six lessons or five lessons or whatever. So if you click on this, you will see all of the lessons that are related to that word, which is really, really helpful if you wanna see like other ways that that word is used or if you want some more example sentences and so on. So that's a really, really handy little tool. So let's talk about how words get into the word bank. There are two ways I want to talk about. First is for those of you who make a point to like study every day or a few times a week or whatever it is. If you take the lessons from your dashboard, like let's say we'll take this lesson here. If you take your lesson like every day or every week or something like that, you'll maybe have noticed that there is a vocabulary section in your lesson. So if you go to the vocabulary section and you pick a few things that you know you want to practice, like let's say you have a couple of expressions that you need to work on your pronunciation or maybe they're just difficult for you to remember or you thought they were interesting, whatever, whatever the reason is, you can select those words with this checkbox that's on the left of that section right there, the vocabulary section, and click add to word bank. So once you do this, you'll get a message that says the words were added successfully and the words are now in your word bank. Great. That is one way that you can add words to your word bank. The other way I want to talk about today, let's say you are using one of the vocabulary lists on our website for your studies. So if you go to the vocabulary drop down menu and we'll just choose like the 100 most common word list for today, but you can do the same thing with any of the vocabulary lists on our website, you can find the same checkbox that's on the left of all of the vocabulary words here. So you can choose a few words uh, and add them to your word bank. So let's say that I want to add, you know, this word, laugh and make in this case. And so once you have these chosen, you can, from the top of the page or from this section that comes down if you're on the computer version, you can add all words to the word bank. If I click this, it says add all words. I can choose the word bank, which will add all of the words in the list or I can click on add selected words. So that's just the words I have selected and add those to my word bank. So I'll do that now and I'll get a message that says they are there now. Great, okay. So these are the two really, really easy ways that you can add things to your word bank. Let's go back to the word bank now and talk about some of the different features and kind of functionality here. So of course, if you just want to have like a quick glance at the words that you've added to your word bank, you can do that really easily here. If you want to do, you know, practice with the audio files. If you want to practice your pronunciation at different speeds, great. You can do all of that here. You can just read through the list if you want to do that. Fine. But I want to talk about some other things that you can do from this page. So the first thing I want to talk about is making a flashcard deck from your word bank. So if you click, if I just don't have anything words, no words selected here now, if I want to 
click this right now, sync to flashcards, nothing will happen. So in order to create a flashcard deck from my word bank, I need to select words. So if you've run into this problem, make sure you have select, like selected words from your word bank. So you can select all of them with this checkbox up here at the top, or you can just select a few words like this and choose the ones that you want to study at that moment, and then click sync to flashcards. It will think for a minute, and then it will take you to your flashcard page. And then once this loads up, you'll see a My Word Bank flashcard deck. So this will have all of the flashcards that you've asked it to sync to this deck. So if you want to make flashcards in this way from your word bank, this is a super, super easy way to do it to make sure you're studying only the words that are like specific to you that you want to know right now. So this is one way that you can use your word bank and the study tools inside it. Okay, so let's go back to the word bank now. And I wanna talk about this section right here. This section says labels. So we don't have any in this case, but what you can do with the words in your word bank is assign them different labels. So if you wanna have a label that says like, verbs or adjectives or something like that, or if you have like a specific hobby or a specific category of word, you can label those words so that you always are able to easily see which words belong to that group. So for example, if you want to study only the verbs in your word bank, you can choose only the verbs from your list and like sync them to a flashcard deck if you want to. So if you want to be like really super organized about your words in that way, you have that functionality from this page as well. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is for those of you who like to have something physical to use with your studies, like a worksheet kind of thing where you can actually write or maybe use a highlighter or use different colors, that kind of thing, you can also make a physical printout of this information with this button right here. If you go to the printer friendly version and click this, you will get this kind of output. So it's a really, really, really super simple just list of all of the words and the information about those words that you can print out. And again, you can change this. You can put another one together next week and make a totally different word bank printout if you want to as well. So this is something that you can use to easily just get a printable version of your word bank. Then the last thing that I wanna talk about is this export word bank button. If you want to get this word bank, but in a different format, you can do that from this section. So if if you click on export word bank, you can choose to export it from PDF version, you can do it uh, as a CSV, you can do it as XML, and if you have labels on your words, you can also choose to select those here as well. So there are a few different things that you can do with the word bank. So as you can see, hopefully you can see that there are a lot of different things that you can do with just this one tool. And hopefully all of them are just, you know, different ways that you can study those words and remember them for longer. And they're also really, really easy to integrate into your existing lesson flow. So if you're not using the word bank to help you remember interesting words or difficult words, or just things that you want to practice a little bit more, now you have some great ideas and you can get started right away. So if you're tired of forgetting all the new words you come across, take advantage of the word bank. It's your extended brain, where you can save all the words you come across and review them with a quick glance. So if you wanna learn the language and get access to these learning tools and our learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. Access your free language gifts right now before they expire. First, the most common adjectives PDF ebook. You'll master over 90 common adjectives with this bonus PDF picture ebook. You can download and review it on any device. Second, can you talk about your feelings? You will with the brand new Feelings PDF Conversation Cheat Sheet. You learn all the must know emotions in your target language. Third, the top 35 adjectives for personalities. Can you describe your personality? This next bonus teaches you the 35 must-know adjectives for personalities, so you can talk about yourself in your target language. Fourth, how to express quantity. How much of the target language do you know? A lot? A little? Learn how to express quantity with this quick one-minute lesson. Fifth, how to talk about feeling excited. If you want to talk about your feelings, then this next lesson teaches you 13 words for excitement in just a few minutes. And sixth, looking for a new language learning app? With the innovative language learning app, you learn language fast through conversations, and you start speaking in minutes because our conversation lessons are just three to 15 minutes long. Download innovative language learning for free for the Android, iPhone, and iPad. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire.
Hey everyone, welcome to the Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning. Where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is the satisfaction of reaching goals. If you made it a goal or a New Year's resolution to learn this language, did you hit this goal yet? Or did you give up a few days later, as most people do with a New Year's resolution? Most people quit and generally don't feel too great about language goals because they've failed too many times before, and so there's no satisfaction there. The good news is this can be easily fixed, so you can actually start your language journey and feel good about reaching goals if you make a small change. So stick around. Today, you'll discover how to actually set and reach language goals, how to enjoy the language learning journey, and much more. But first, if you're looking for new free language resources and downloads, here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the most common adjectives PDF ebook. You'll master over 90 common adjectives with this bonus PDF picture ebook. You can download and review it on any device. And second, can you talk about your feelings? You will with the brand new Feelings PDF Conversation Cheat Sheet. You learn all the must know emotions in your target language. Download it for free right now. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Now to today's topic. The satisfaction of reaching goals. Part one, how to actually set and reach language goals. If you ask most people, learning a new language and reaching that goal is almost impossible for the everyday person. Which is why New Year's resolutions have kind of become an annual joke, where people are all, New Year, New Me, and then quit a day or two later. But that's because most people also set goals the completely wrong way. Are you guilty of this too? Most people set big, vague goals, like, I want to be fluent, I want to speak a new language, or I want to lose weight, or I want to save money. In the case of language, you decide you want to learn, you download an app or get a textbook, you try to stick with it, and by the second week, you're done because the goal is too overwhelming. There's just no way you see yourself becoming fluent anytime soon. And so you quit. And in your mind, it's because it's just not meant to be, because the language is too hard, because New Year's resolutions don't work, or some other excuse. But the truth is, you're quitting because you set yourself up for failure with how you set your goals, and that can be fixed. If you make a simple change to your goals, you give yourself a much better chance of success, and you can actually reach your language goals. What kind of change? Well, instead of aiming for big, vague goals, like I wanna be fluent, you do the opposite. You set small, measurable monthly goals. What are small, measurable monthly goals? For example, learn 100 words by the end of January, or speak one minute by the end of January. One minute and 100 words are small goals. You're not exactly aiming for the moon here. You can also measure one minute and 100 words, and you have a clear deadline by the end of the month. Either you reach the goal by the end of January, or you didn't. And if you think about it, a goal like one minute is almost impossible not to reach. You need to know maybe 10 or 15 lines to occupy that time. And 100 words, that's just a matter of learning three or four words a day for the next 30 days. And that's the whole point. You make your goals so easy so you can actually start hitting them. And as a result, you hit them, you develop confidence in your ability to get things done. Instead of complaining about New Year's resolutions, and the sky's the limit from there. But just because the goals are easy doesn't mean you'll barely learn anything. Let's say you can speak one minute of your target language by the end of January, then three minutes by the end of February, then five minutes by March, and 10 minutes by June. Speaking for 10 minutes in your target language is a big deal. A lot of people have spent more time on vocabulary apps and still can't handle a basic conversation. So by setting these small goals, you allow yourself to succeed instead of setting big goals and then blaming New Year's resolutions. Part two, how to enjoy the language learning journey. Now, you may wonder if you're so focused on goals and results, doesn't that take away the fun and enjoyment? And what if you miss a goal? The good news is this is not like school, where there's pressure, where you either pass or fail. 
If you make the goals small and realistic enough, it's not painful at all to learn. Remember, the reason why people quit is because their big, vague goals are too overwhelming to do in the first place. And if you can reach a small goal, that also makes the learning more enjoyable. Suddenly, you feel like you're on the right track, you're getting better, you're speaking more of the language, and as a result, you're more motivated to keep at it. Just think about sports or video games. It's not so fun if you aren't good and you're losing left and right. But if you start improving and if you get good, it's a lot more fun. And that's exactly what happens once you start hitting these small, measurable goals. So to make language learning more enjoyable and actually doable, set small, measurable goals that you can actually reach. Thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about testing and assessment, a brutally honest way to improve your language. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description.